let's get into this right here since we're on this. This is something that if you're in the gift-giving mood this season, you should give this particular DVD. Um, my name is Cesare or Cesare Borgia. This is really a, a must-see and an excellent um, stocking stuffer, so to speak. And you can find it, you know, it's out there. You can also find it on our um, LOJ uh, DACA, DACA vids, right? Our LOJ DVDs at Line of Judah Society. Also, Rastafari Ground Nation dot com has a link. Let me um, click open the cover right here because uh, you can look up the exposed DVD that's entitled My Name is Cesare, right? Or Caesar, Cesare, Caesar Borgia, circa 1492. Now, exactly who are we speaking about? Right. And why are we speaking about some of you already know this particular, you know, the background and have done studies and investigated this particular subject matter. And most of us are moving forward in the truth now that we know the truth concerning the so-called uh, white Jesus, uh, a.k.a. Cesare Borgia and his father. Did you know who his father was? His father was Pope Alexander the sixth. Right. That's um. Zoom in right here. Zoom out. Okay, here's here's the DVD cover. Let us uh, click on that particular DVD cover. So we, we we've spoken about this already, right? We've, we've spoken about this particular subject matter, but there's many who haven't heard this truth, right? They haven't heard the truth about this particular subject matter, and many are kind of caught up in the whole white Santa. And Jesus, white Jesus kind of thing and everything. But once you begin to know the truth, you'll find out, you'll recognize, you'll realize why there's many people who are so desperate, right? So desperate to foster on you the lie, to continue to foster on humanity the lie and why they're very invested in believing, right? In believing this particular lie. But more than that, this particular lie concerning Cesare Borgia or the so-called white Jesus, he became the model for the Renaissance, the new um, European image of white Jesus. So when certain people say that, well, uh, Megyn Kelly and uh, Bill O'Reilly and others who say that Santa Claus was white and tried to either say or infer that the Jesus of the Bible, right, the real Jesus Christ was not white, but they try to infer that, well, there's there's history behind it, right? There's history and there's European mythology. It, it, it kind of goes along the same lines of Santa Claus being based on and the, Saint Nicholas, Right. Santa Claus was not based on St. Nicholas. Santa Claus was a pagan, originally a pagan northern European. This was part of their religion, which had little to zilch to do with Christianity. When it finally was incorporate, incorporated with Christianity, was incorporated with the, the European pagan or the Gentile, which we call counterfeit Christianity. And so the history, when they talk about, well, um, Santa Claus or Jesus being white or Santa being, being white, they're speaking within a limited historical range. These two are not really related. But when I thought about it, I said, wait, they're not overtly related, but in a covert sense, it is related because if they've taken a historical saint, right? A saint of the early and true faith of Christ before the whitewash and before the Europeans and the Romanists took it over. One thing that I love that the Bible says, you can judge a tree by its fruit. So you can see that with the rise of white supremacy Christianity, we can see clearly the historical fruit of white supremacist Christianity. 
And we also see the truth of the word of Yeshua, the word of Jesus Christos, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, very clearly in the Bible when he says that many shall come in my name. They shall come in whose name? In Jesus name. Right. According to the the anglicized version of the Bible, the King James version of the Bible, they should come in my name and shall say, I am Christ. Many shall come in my name and say, I am Christ. Many have come over the past 400, 500 years because that's the relative time and space between the whitewashing, right? Or the Europeanization, right? And the rise of, 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 of Europe and the Romanist European culture over basically this world order, right? This, this Gentile world system. So those who are into the biblical prophecies, when it speaks about the times of the Gentiles, that's directly associated with the counterfeit image. So when the Bible speaks to us about the image of the beast and we see this controversy going on concerning, you know, Jesus, um, some some folks want to believe, you know, the false image. They want to believe the lie that they they grew up on. Right. So that's Caesar Bogiers and that's the image of the beast. Now, many are familiar with um, the Walter Salman back in 19, I think, 41 roughly 1941 when the Americans and, and, and their British uh, um, cousins and foreparents, you know, the Anglo-Europeans and the Anglo-Americans were going against their cousins, the, the, the racist Nazis in Germany, whom they funded, you know, that's also part of it. Um, Walter Salman, a uh, small time artist of, of, of some caliber but not very well known he's become well known because i think there's over there's like maybe billions of this these very same images hanging around ignorant on ignorant christians walls when i say ignorant i'm not saying that that those who are ignorant are stupid after they get to hear the truth and refusing to investigate and find out the truth of it, just dismissing like what we're saying and what we're bringing forward and what so many others are bringing forward, then they become, you could say, you know, foolish. And then they, you know, they have no excuse for their error. Right. But many folks don't know these things. I didn't know these things. I mean, I mean, how are we supposed to know these things? I mean, you, you go to church you look up on the wall, you see an image like this. I mean, what are you to believe? Even though those of us who still even had a, 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 a spiritual a gut, right? Or foundation, something was, wasn't right. You know, something, I, m- I remember seeing this image, something wasn't right about it. You know, you remember this particular image and some of the other images were like 3D images in a sense. If you walked over here, they changed and everything. I mean, they were using technology. They were using every craft. I mean, Disney was not even established at that time, but we can tell that this, this deceptive root was in them to make believe, to convince people. Right. And you have to ask yourself, well, why did they go so far to destroy many of the original Afro Asian, Afro Shemitic, the more black Christian or Middle Eastern Christian images? Right. Even the iconoclast phase and the whitewashing phase. And then right after that, circa 1492, circa um, 16th century. The Renaissance will come about. And this is why when you look at where these images, especially the Renaissance images are, are held or maintained or propagated from, we trace all roads basically lead back to Rome. So how shocking is it? Right. If you're unaware about this, but, but, but how shocking is it that Caesar Borgias, who was the, the Pope Alexander the sixth, his son, his actual son, and, and there's and there are documentaries, there are books out there on on the Borgias. Some I think it's a HBO or Showtime series recently on the Borgias. Um, there's an older I think we have it at our on our Doc Vids 
on the Borgias. That's, I would really highly recommend that. I haven't really seen the new one, but I know sometimes the new ones, sometimes they, now that this is a popular subject matter, they're trying to re-spin the story. But in that older one I've seen that we have on our line of Judah, L-O-J Society dot org, the doc vids, you know, you can pick that up as well as um my name is Cesar Borgias, which would really expose, right, expose you to the truth that you haven't known and get you out of worshiping the image of the beast, if you are believing that, because we understand that some folks grew up on this image, right? You know, this uh, Euro European Jesus, it is actually modeled, right? This Euro Jesus, right? Or white Jesus, if you want to say, or Anglo Jesus, because all the images basically come from the original character that we're speaking about. Right. Who is Caesar Bo- uh, Borgias or Borgia. Right. Why do they model? You have to ask yourself this. They modeled their image, the white European image, the false image of the son of man, of the son of man, the son of God. They modeled him on an Italian gangbanger. Caesar Borgias was nothing other than a gangbanger. He, he, he was a hoodlum, right? He was a wicked, a violent, a wick, a criminal, right? But his, his father was the Pope. I mean, it's like saying his father was like police commissioner, right? Or the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Or, I mean, his, his father was, was Caesar in a sense. And, but his name was Caesar, right? And it was at the same time that these classical, um, Romanist and European Greco-Roman imagery was being made up, right? This is when they was remaking the image of Europe, right? As well as the image of Christianity, because it was decided upon that they would use this counterfeit to subdue the world. And it seems as though they succeeded. Even the Bible says, right, about worshiping the image of the beast. This is why this particular issue, when we speak about Jesus and the white Jesus, and some folks be like, I, I, I don't want to even discuss it. So, some people may have started out watching this video and didn't even get this far because some when they start to hear the truth, if they're not familiar with it, and, and if they've been deceived, they start to feel guilty. They start to feel ashamed because they might have believed that this Italian gangbanger, Cesar Borgias, was the image and they might have prayed to the picture, right? But, but see, this is where the true grace of God, right? The, the, the true grace of Jah Rastafari is so precious, right? And is so beautiful, right? It's not your fault. See, before you knew the truth, it wasn't your fault. You were deceived. Right. You were hoodwinked. You were bamboozled. But woe to those that after they hear and get to know the truth. Right. Still would try to say, well, the image, it doesn't really matter what color Jesus is. See, that's why their salvation is vain. Right. And and those kind of so-called Christians See, if it's not, if it's not in Christians, it's a whole different level right there, right? They need to hear the real gospel, right? But you know that if they're not going to even be honest about the easiest thing to be honest about, his image, his race, they're not going to be very much honest about the doctrine. They're not going to be very much honest about the true teaching. This is why most under counterfeit Christianity have given heed to deceiving spirits into doctrines of demons. And, and so what is the evidence that this is true? I mean, look at the world. A majority of people will claim on some level or another to be Christian. And many of them would wink, so to speak, at this particular image of Jesus Christ. You understand? And, and most would be very offended if you even critical or criticize or critique 
right? You know, present the evidence that this is a lie. This is the very lie that has been born witness in revelation. This is deception, right? This is, this is deception. It's really of the same caliber. This deception is of the same caliber as the whole Saint Nick Santa Claus, the Saint Nick Santa Claus thing, right? Because I tried to tell you that, well, Saint Nicholas, right, became the model for Santa Claus. Nothing could be further from the truth. When they say that, when they try to connect Santa Claus with Saint Nicholas, you know what that is? That's a cover story, right? That's them trying to put out their cover story, right? Because they know, proverbially speaking, the jig is up. They try to say, oh, speaking about race, that's race baiting, right? Listen, we didn't start this race racism thing. It wasn't us, right? It wasn't we as the victims. We are the victims. Most most of you all are victims of this. You really have no investment. You'll, ha you'll have a happier life, a more blessed life, a more peaceful, a more prosperous life once you get to know the truth and you receive it. Right. And you and, and you turn away. You, you repent, have, have a change of mind. Right. It's, it's important for us to touch on this. Right. Because there's still many who have not heard or only heard a little bit here and there. So when we look at this particular image and this is one more image right here. Right. This is the the Walt Salmon. Right. So what we have. Right. What we have right here. Right. And this is this is where. OK. Right. And most Christians, sadly speaking. Most Christians have received the whitewash because the scheme, right? The Romanist scheme, the Roman. Remember Rome, what it speaks about the four beasts, that Rome is the only one that did not really fall, but would metastasize into the, the end time, this, this end time kind of Babylon prophecy in the scripture. But very important part of the prophecy is the image of the beast. Right, is the image of the beast. This is why we're focusing on this in this particular video. Caesar Borgia's white Jesus, right? Your so your so called white Jesus is the image of the beast, right? Is the image of the beast. How, how, how do we say that? Because look who they tell us they are they are they are seeking to tell us that this white goy, right? This white goy, goyim. Gentile, that this white Gentile is the image of an Hebrew or more correctly, an Afro Hebrew. They're telling us that this Euro Gentile is the image of our Lord and Savior, who was Afro Shemitic. That's what they're trying to tell us. Right. Even when those points of the scripture about his hair being like, whoa, uh, that's a very clear indication right there. Right. Or his feet as brass burnt in the furnace of fire. That's another clear indication, though there is a a a a scripturally, biblically, contextually deeper interpretation of that. Still, it speaks to the truth of his racial identification for those who can receive it. This is the image of the beast, brothers and sisters. Right? How do we know what we know it? On what says with two or three witnesses, every word is justified. Well, let's take the word of the true Savior, our true Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, first. And the first word he says he says, "Many shall come in my name, right, and say I am Christ." In other words, they bring this image in the name of Christianity and tell you it's Jesus. That's point one right there. Now Christ also teaches us. Our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, also teaches us in his word, right? He says, if we know the word, we have life. If we keep his word, right? If we, if we value his word, he says, you can tell a tree by its fruit. So need we look at the fruit, right? Of European Christianity. Need we look at the fruit, right? Of white supremacy. 
need we look at the fruit? I mean, I mean, I mean, we're dwelling in a so-called system or civilization that is the fruit or the byproduct or the result of this deception, right? And then on top of all of that, brothers and sisters, to add insult to injury, they try to associate this white cheese and um, white Santa, Santa Claus, right? Santa Claus, who's a, a another European part of European mythology, right? In the words, a European, right? Myth, mythological figure. Santa Claus was not this nice genial figure that he's made out to be. I mean, I know they're writing a bunch of books where they're like astounding truths about Santa Claus that most people don't know. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a vain attempt, right, to give life to the image of the beast, right? And we already know that some of the sharpest and the harshest words, right, in the New Testament, which is, which is virtually full of grace, the grace of God is what's revealed, but some of the harshest words spoken are spoken concerning the image of the beast, right? Because it goes to the very heart, right, of what is important to the God and Father, the Abba, the Abba and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshe, Jesus Christos. And that's his son, right? That's his son. You remember when when we're talking about the image of Jesus, we're not talking about any regular Joe. This is why when we look in the Western Gentile, European, Anglo-American culture, there seems to be like a great disrespect and disregard, right, for the person of Christ. Even though if we study their own culture, right, the European culture, the Anglo-American culture, we see that it's been degradating, right? It's been getting worse, Right. Their air religiousness is beginning worse over time. And part of that is because the truth is coming out because people are getting to know the truth for themselves and they're beginning to be free. Right. I mean, the, the thing that needs be done is the knowledge of the truth. Right. Is knowing the truth. Once again, I'm going to recommend this particular DVD. I think it's an excellent um, stocking stuffer. Right. Um, thinking about what the Savior says, you know, he says the children of the world are wise in their generation, you know, because if we were the children of the world, we already have this ready for you. Hey, uh, stocking stuff, uh, Cesar Borgias and, and maybe a couple of videos, right? especially when the seasons come around like this and we know what seasons be coming around and what they be putting forward around these seasonal times. We need to have our videos Right. And other um, other other product placement, especially the educational and the consciousness and the and the and the faithful um, Christian teaching, the faithful Christ teaching. Right. But if you can't recognize or you refuse to recognize the truth staring you right in your face. Right. And, and can't recognize and then we can't recognize, can't receive the truth. Right. Then, then, then you're damned already, right? So our question is to black, to our fellow law sheep of the house of Israel, so-called black people, especially in the Americas and the Caribbean and, and to black Christians is why do you pray, right? To the image of the beast. Why do you accept this counterfeit image as as the image of the Lord and Savior. Why will you refuse to look upon Yeshua, Jesus, Jesus Christ in his humanity as a black man? See, because black Christians don't want to receive Jesus Christ as a black man. It's, it almost goes back to the, the Israelites. Remember the Israelites, they murmured against Yahweh. They murmured against the Lord and he sent fiery serpents that bit them and many of them died and many of them were sick and many of them were in pain. Moses, he entreated Yahweh, uh, Jah, and Jah told um, Moses, Musa, 
said, go and, 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 and the Nehushtan, you know, the brazen serpent, go and make a brazen serpent. He said that when they look, right, when they look, right, upon the brazen serpent, they would be healed. And this is what's so very important with this image of the beast. Consequently, and vis-a-vis, when black people, especially black people, right, receive this particular image and all the, 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 their like counterfeit images that, that are all actually based on one historical European, um, Italian gangbanger known as Cesare Borgia. Consequently, when they look upon this image and accept it as their Lord and Savior, as Jesus Christ of the Bible, no wonder they're cursed. No wonder black people are so sick in, sick in their head, sick in their spirit, right? So, so ass backward, right? They're under a curse, right? They're under a curse, right? And not just black folks. It's not only just black people, right? I, I think it's even likewise, it's white folks too, because white people, poor old Megan Kelly, I forgive her. I forgive her for the true black Christ's sake, for Yeshua's sake, for Yesus Christ's sake, right? Because th- these people are so deceived, right? You have to recognize that they have been led to believe that everything white, or at least the majority of it, their mythology is right, right? And then it's folks like us that come to, um, you know, spoil their party. It's like right here. You see this right here? This is kind of a good example right here. This is a good example right here. Before, right, when coming out of Africa, coming out of his Afro-Shemitic roots, his Kamo shemitic roots, right? We see the Oset and Kherui, right? Then the, the middle image is a more correct image. Let's look at the middle image of the reason for the season. But now the way after image or the, the European, the white Mary and, and, and white, actually Mary, the original image that they had from the Renaissance time of Mary, it was actually modeled on Caesar Bourget's sister, Lucretia, Lucrezia. I did a whole video, a whole uh, series on that as well as out there. Anyone feel free to download it and, and do a uh, Caesar Borgia's part two and, you know, use the white Mary. My name is Lucretia Borgia because that's who she is, Lucretia Borgia. Right. So just to, just to kind of show you the kind of historical context you need to have. Right. Because in a, in a finite, a limited sense, when they say, well, well, Santa Claus is white. Well, basically, of course, it comes out of Europe. It's a Europe paganistic heathen, which you come that some people later on, some Christians later on use a connection, a vain connection with Saint Nicholas, right? The original Christian saint, right? Of the Eastern Orthodox Church. They use that. In other words, you can say that Santa Claus is the kind of Roman Catholic Protestant perversion of the Eastern Orthodox who predominantly were Afro-Asian, Afro-Shemitic and and more darker skinned black peoples, non-Europeans. So what they did is basically spin a counterfeit image off of an actual Christian saint, which is virtually the same thing they did with the image of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, into, you know, the, the particular character that you see right here, right? Whose name is actually Caesar Cesare Borgia, the son of Pope Alexander the Sixth. So brothers and sisters, uh, get a copy of this. I mean, I, th- I think we really need to assemble and organize videos Right. And and have them as um, stocking stuffers for our friends and our relatives and others and, and, and to give them gifts. Right. To give them gifts as the original um, um, Caduce, uh, 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 Nicholas. All right. So we're going to work on that as well. So I hope this is um, 
I hope, I hope and pray that you're able to, you know, know the truth. I mean, it is so very important. And, and to stop worshiping the image, I pray that the grace of God, because I, I think that this is, we're talking about spiritual wickedness to believe, right? That this is Jesus Christ. And then to know, right? Exactly who this really is, right? And how evil, right? The, original the, the 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 person that we're really looking at in these pictures it's far from yeshua hamushi it's far from Jesus christos it's actually what revelation warns us about and revelation warns us concerning the worship of the image right of the beast right the image of the beast Caesar, Borgias, Borgia, white supremacy, right? It is the beast, right? It, it, it's the beast. You, you, you can see that in its fruit. And it's so very important that you pray for these deceived white folks, brothers and sisters. No, it, I think this is very, very important that you keep them in your prayers. You see, it's the power of prayer. It doesn't mean that we won't fight if necessary. Right. They may have us outgun on guns. Right. But we, we outgun them on spiritual truth. Right. On, on the truth. Right. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Be free. Free indeed. Shalom. Ras Teferi.